What is up guys? This is Avenge here bringing a much needed update video to discuss what's going to be happening on February 1st of this year. Because uh, a week or so ago, I did a video explaining why I'm going to be moving to Twitch on the 1st of February. And obviously, you know, some people were not able to make it due to you know, life circumstances and other responsibilities, which is completely understandable. And then you have some that were there that was either too confused or too frustrated to comprehend why I am making a move. So I felt like it was very important to add some clarity by explaining this in a more controlled setting, as well as provide pictures to help um, explain it that much more through visuals and so this is why we're here this is why I'm making this video to discuss why I am moving to Twitch on February 1st so I will be streaming on Twitch Monday through Saturday and I still plan to stream on YouTube However, it's going to be once a week, and that day will be Sunday, and it'll be on the Sundays that I'm available to stream on YouTube. And every now and then, I will also try to provide an additional YouTube stream, um, but those streams will be off, you know, they will not be part of the new schedule that starts on February 1st so it would be more random um, I also still plan to provide a variety of content in the form of videos as well now I've said this before this isn't because of money because I always treat donations as a bonus and plus I use those donations to either improve the quality of the streams or provide more content for you all to enjoy I mean, like, this was a very emotional thing for me to discuss. And back when I did that stream, it was even more emotional because of it being live and I was, my emotions was at an all time high. <laughs> so I really want to touch bases with you all um, about this in a video format so that you guys will get a clearer picture of what's going on like the majority of my accomplishments has been on YouTube I made a lot of friends on this platform as well and that's why this is so difficult for me as a content creator because everything majority of everything happened on YouTube um, I plan to support and be there for my YouTube family um, that I've gained during my streaming journey um, however I cannot stay on YouTube completely anymore I mean YouTube has been really struggling to maintain stability and I'm tired of all the mistakes as well There's so many errors and a lot of these problems that YouTube is having has been negatively affecting my channel and the, this is why I am discussing this unfortunate decision that I have to make. I don't want to risk losing my community because of YouTube's problems. And, you know, I found a lot of startling issues that I want to share with you guys today. Now, the f number one reason why I'm moving to Twitch is the fact that Google Plus is being taken off of YouTube that's the number one reason but the other reason is just helps add on to why this number one reason is so bad um, and I'll explain that shortly um, there's also the issue about you know Google and YouTube not really caring about the creators <coughs> you know them messing with the uh, final ratings of videos and streams and 
creators' voices now being claimed and YouTube creating multiple live streams and notifications that doesn't work. And a lot of you have experienced that or heard about it and know people that have been through it. Uh, subscribers occasionally being auto unsubscribed by YouTube, YouTube dropping YouTube gaming, which was something that helped streamers get noticed. Um, and my even my finances was getting messed with by YouTube. And then last but not least, I lost 2000 plus subscribers. So why don't we go ahead and first talk about my number one reason as to why I am leaving and that is that Google Plus is being taken off of YouTube and like I said earlier that's my number one concern why I'm leaving. I mean like YouTube hasn't always been attached to Google Plus and ever since Google Plus took over YouTube you know it there's been noticeable problems and some of you may know about the earlier stream that I did last year when, <coughs> when I discussed the video that Markiplier did about Google Plus in the past. Um, the incident on October 16th, you know, is closely linked to Google Plus. And what happened on October 16th? YouTube shut down worldwide for a good number of hours and obviously content creators are going to be in a panic especially those content creators that rely on it because losing a day is like losing another opportunity to make something happen and this is something that never happened before you know there was news that google plus had a leak that they didn't want to come out in the open because it would make them look very bad and the reason why that is is because that was a security leak that's some pretty serious stuff and that's pretty damaging so google decided to you know shut down google plus at that moment but here's the problem um youtube is now linked to google plus so therefore if google plus is shut down then youtube would shut down with it which kind of explains what happened on October 16th because a few hours you know in just a few hours YouTube just magically came back up like nothing happened Google noticed some serious problems and decided to turn Google Plus back on in order to get YouTube back up if shutting down Google Plus caused that much of an uproar for YouTube then there's no telling what would happen if YouTube is disconnected from Google Plus no one knows what people will lose after that happens I mean think about it viewers use Google accounts and these Google accounts are attached to YouTube and to make YouTube accounts guess what has to be attached their Google accounts so I'll repeat it again, viewers have to use their Google accounts in order to access YouTube. So what do you think is going to happen if those Google accounts are being disconnected from YouTube? What about this one? YouTube's connected to Google AdSense. And Google AdSense is how content creators have to get their revenue now. There's no more third parties that content creators interact with. They have to interact with Google AdSense. So what do you think would happen to the money and other transactions that people obtain through YouTube? The super chats, sponsorships. What happens then? Nobody really knows. So if you look at all the issues YouTube is already having I mean it's proven that YouTube was never able to fix the problems that have been happening for the past few years so <coughs> it's just that uncertainty so instead of taking the risk of losing my community I would rather move my community over to a safe platform I want to go to a platform where there isn't, con you know, there isn't, it's not connected to 
outside applications, a platform that doesn't rob me of my community under my nose, a platform that's stable, a platform that gives everyone opportunities, and a platform that cares about their content creators. I would rather, I would rather take a chance to keep streaming live on Twitch instead of running the risk of losing you all. Now I will tell you one thing, if YouTube was able to fix all of the past problems that I shared in that list, there would be no reason for me to make a video like this because I would feel more comfortable with the idea of dealing with what's happening with Google Plus. But the fact that YouTube can't fix these other problems, I mean, there's no way they're gonna be able to fix this one when Google Plus, you know, detaches itself from YouTube. This is my number one reason as to why I am moving over to Twitch. Now let's talk about the other things. Um, YouTube and Google not caring about their content creators. And I find this to be a bit of a problem. I mean, why do I say this? And there's many reasons why. I mean, if you look at the content, you just look at how content creators are being treated. Now, you know, I was never a huge fan about talking about other content creators, but I have good reason to talk about them at this point. And then you look at PewDiePie, one of the pretty much the top content creator on YouTube. You know, he should be the guy that YouTube always supports, no matter who's joining their platform. Of course, they do support him, but when it comes to other content creators that can bring them more business, I mean, they're going to side with those creators or celebrities a little bit faster than they would PewDiePie. And so let's give you some examples here. The moment that Jack Black joined YouTube, Jack Black was supported by YouTube instantly to the fact that he was trending over PewDiePie for a good while. And why is that? Because Jack Black is a celebrity. Celebrities are known by the entire world. And when it comes to PewDiePie, he's mainly known by the younger crowd. Especially the crowd that mainly uses only YouTube. Or they just mainly use YouTube in general. I mean, there are even channels that are smaller than PewDiePie that YouTube would reach out to more. And I'm talking about smaller channels that, asso that associate with more companies. Because a smaller channel that associates with more companies will have a much greater chance of getting direct support from YouTube due to the fact that those channels, you know, could really help spread the word of YouTube's brand to other organizations. And, but, you know, one thing that you can't forget, you, social media is still a business and networking is a powerful tool in social media. I mean, the more reliable contacts, the more potential gain. And a good example of this is Maximilian. You know, he has an enormous background in terms of connections to Capcom, as well as the quickly growing esports gaming scene and so much more. I mean, it's a business and YouTube is going to reach out to the fish that's going to give them more because YouTube wants to continue spreading their brand. So any channels with very little pull in YouTube's eyes would get very little backing and copy and paste messages to critical issues those content creators are facing. Google ruined YouTube because of their monopolization of YouTube. Now, yeah, both YouTube and Twitch has a gigantic organization that owns them. Google owns YouTube and Amazon owns Twitch. And the difference here is Google controls what YouTube does 
while Amazon lets Twitch run their system in order to avoid impeding the current success that Twitch has. So, <coughs> in essence, Google has their own team trying to run YouTube, whereas YouTube's actual team has little control over many of the issues that's happening, whereas Google calls all the shots. All the changes that YouTube is over, you know, undergoing has a lot to do with Google, which hints as to why YouTube can't fix their problems. I mean, YouTube can't fix their own system and they have to resort to hiding the fact that they can't. So I feel like if YouTube was able to fix a lot of the problems that they were facing all this time, like I said before, I wouldn't even have done that stream back then. And then you look at Amazon and Amazon supports Twitch and allows Twitch to have full reign over their own system because of the simple fact that Amazon knows that they know nothing about Twitch. So Amazon focuses more on supporting Twitch um, in different ways. And you know the problems that Twitch has? They, they're able to fix those on their own. So, and not only that, they support content creators and viewers alike. You know, for example, allowing viewers to donate for free with the bit system if they don't have the ability to support their favorite streamers financially. Viewers being able to gift other viewers subscriptions to gain access to bonus content only available to subs. I mean, let me share my experience about that, which I found was really cool, where I was in uh, one of Oshi's streams, and even Dino's stream, and I've been gifted subs. Someone gifted me a sub, and I became a subscriber. I didn't even ask for it. Someone just out of nowhere gave it to me. That was freaking insane. <laughs> I mean, that was so cool. So, um, And then... Allowing viewers to make clips of their favorite moments with the streamers that they follow. I mean, that's just fun. It's like picking out your favorite moments and making a scrapbook, <laughs> you know. So, and then Twitch even allows smaller content creators. Um, they give them the ability to become affiliates to gain the ability to get subs. Which is like a sponsor in YouTube terms. And once they become an affiliate, their sub button is never taken away. Whereas you look at YouTube and they're planning to um, increase the requirements so that future content creators have to do a hundred times more just to get it. You know, so I mean, th that's crazy. How do you go from... The requirement being 1,000 subscribers to 30,000 subscribers. I mean, honestly, 1,000 subscribers was very reasonable. And because one getting 1,000 subscribers on YouTube is not an easy thing to do. It literally took me three years to reach that before I joined the Nintendo community. So let's go ahead and talk about messing with final ratings of streams and videos. And when I say ratings, I'm referring to likes and dislikes and the number of views. I mean, <clears throat> there have been multiple times I witnessed this. I only witnessed this, not witnessed, but I only noticed this when Rigo tweeted to YouTube about his video um, discussing his ratings getting messed up by YouTube and it was like the number of likes and views got reduced but the dislikes stayed the same. You know the reason why that's bad is because when it comes to YouTube's ratings it has a big impact on the algorithm and so if your video or stream gets a lower rating than it really got then that video or stream will not be supported by YouTube through recommendations and other means. I mean, this even happened to one of my streams as well. <coughs> <coughs> so, 
so let's talk about this is brief this is real quick where a content creator talked about his voice could now be claimed you know like a while ago a content creator actually pointed out to youtube that his voice was claimed by some other person and i mean the crazy thing was this video was unlisted and private you know there was no way anyone could even see it i mean and all he was doing was testing his settings for future content privately so i mean that makes no sense it's just not cool so just imagine every one of my streams getting flagged for my voice being owned by someone else just insane so let's talk quickly talk about <clears throat> youtube creating multiple live streams and i have pictures of that happening to me when you go live and there are times viewers um would be notified you're streaming on two streams even though you're streaming on only one here's the problem with this it confuses your viewers your viewers would think they are on the right stream and they're not and so those minutes and ratings is lost and every second click like and dislike helps your algorithm so your stream is actually missing out on a potential increase in ratings because of that one thing so less ratings equals less promotion by youtube and that's why it's a problem <sighs> big issue so let's talk about notifications that doesn't work and i'm just being real here i mean the notification bell doesn't work because people still tell me they don't get notified and when people tell you that they don't get notified that's just not good at all because that's just you're just losing people that way many seasoned content creators and viewers alike told me that they were not notified um there were times that you know it happened to me you know i wasn't notified about other content creator streams that i follow so i mean it's a big issue because people are missing out so let's fast forward over to subscribers getting auto unsub by youtube a uh, friend from Rigo streams have shared her discontent with YouTube uh, auto unsubscribing her from streamers that she's financially backing and the thing that I hate even more is the fact that YouTube calls the you know these subs these lost subs they call them spam you know but the thing is how is every single lost sub considered to be spam because some of those so-called spam accounts are actual people. <coughs> now, let me explain this. Conga Lion Monkey, a mod of Kazoo's channel, has told me that he was unsubscribed from my channel three times. And with that this is one of the quickest ways to lose members of your community because it will come down to people checking some will naturally click when a notification pops up and not everyone looks for notifications if it doesn't pop up so to be honest with you the notification bell really doesn't solve the problem because if you're unsubbed no more notifications that's why it's so important for people to have twitter and discord because if that happens you know um if people are not notified on youtube they'll have better chances of getting notified on twitch and discord before youtube so. now let's talk about youtube um dropping youtube gaming now there's been confirmation that YouTube is going to support streams less than videos as soon as YouTube gaming is completely gone from YouTube. And one reason why streaming worked so well on YouTube for quite some time was actually due to YouTube gaming. And I'm going to explain why that is. I mean, YouTube was taking streams 
and recommending them to the YouTube gaming site, which boost, boosted the streams for a lot of streamers due to the fact that <coughs> those using, you know, YouTube gaming actually found those streams. So to elaborate, streams on YouTube was being pushed to YouTube gaming. And you, at that time, YouTube was also advertising YouTube gaming. They were trying to get people on YouTube to move over to YouTube gaming. And don't believe me? Let me ask you this. Why do you think the sponsor button was only on YouTube gaming in the beginning? It was a way to get streamers to tell people to go to YouTube gaming in order to sponsor them. So, over a certain period of time... YouTube noticed that the momentum, they noticed the momentum that Twitch was gaining through streaming and they wanted to compete with Twitch using their own brand known as YouTube Gaming. But the problem here is that many people did not move to YouTube Gaming and continue to watch their favorite streamers on YouTube, which didn't give YouTube the results that they wanted, therefore YouTube made the decision to drop YouTube Gaming. And so, when YouTube Gaming is completely gone, streams will not be recommended to viewers as much anymore. However, videos would be given more priority um, in terms of recommendations. And if you really think about it, YouTube had streaming available, but they never focused on streaming solely it was mainly videos in the beginning <coughs> now this one hurt me because YouTube was messing with my own money now I sponsored two channels during this year and last year you know I got five plus payment transactions from Google. So instead of paying $10, I was asked to pay $30 plus dollars for two channels. And so I contacted YouTube. Now the first guy was real reasonable. You know, we talked, he agreed with the things that, you know, I was saying and, you know, I waited for a response. And basically this was due to some glitch on YouTube side. Now, some other guy came out of nowhere, and I never talked to him, and he said that he was speaking on the behalf of the first guy that I was talking to. And I'm like, what? Why would someone else need to speak on the behalf of the person that I first spoke to? And this guy said that there was nothing they could do. Now, he told me that I have to see my bank. Now, I didn't agree because my bank has nothing to do with the glitch. So, what could my bank really do? They can't do much of anything. But this guy assured me that my bank would be able to handle it. So, I spoke to my bank and they said they can do nothing about it. <coughs> now, the here's what they told me. The only way that they could fix that problem is wait for the transaction to go through and then I file a dispute. That's just crazy. So, you know, that was more time I had to waste. So I contacted the other guy and he said the same thing. I have to talk to my bank. Therefore, I just told him, okay, I'm going to file a dispute then. And wouldn't you know it the next time I spoke to my bank? <laughs> The transactions were actually removed, not by the bank, but by YouTube. Now, I thought dude said that YouTube couldn't do anything about it. So it's like, once again, there's that lack of transparency. And I mean, it just makes you look scummy. So last thing that I want to talk about is the fact that I lost two thousand plus subscribers <coughs> losing subscribers is never good when you lose them for no reason and apparently this was happening to me for years 
because I can't imagine losing 2,000 subs and they're all considered spam. At least that's what YouTube said. I mean, so according to them, they said that I've been um, gaining spam daily. Therefore, those 2,000 plus subs is spam. That's virtually impossible. Unless you're telling me that raids are now considered spam. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. I don't know. Um, so, I don't believe that because <coughs> I could understand losing 300 to 500. Okay, I could understand that that could be considered spam, but 2,000 plus, no way. Now, I looked at my data and noted that I have been losing subscribers every week. I mean, like, sometimes almost five days a week I'm losing something. You know, but on Twitch I never suffered huge gaps like that. And for that to be happening it is really bad. And I mean, people have been complaining about losing subscribers and notifications every day. And let me tell you, there has never been a time when I made it through one week without getting a YouTube complaint on Twitter. I mean, technically, YouTube is hurting me, and I feel like I'm losing my community right under my nose. And so, in short, my number one reason is the fact that I don't know what's going to happen to YouTube when Google Plus is detached from YouTube. And then all of these other problems that can't be fixed, it literally tells me that there's nothing YouTube is going to be able to do if some serious messed up stuff happens after Google Plus is taken off of YouTube. <coughs> this is just a very frustrating time for me and I don't know what else to do. I mean, the only thing that I can do is move to a safer platform, and that's why I'm making the move over the Twitch. Um, but like I said, I'm not quitting YouTube completely. I will be streaming on YouTube at least once a week. Maybe if I have additional time, you know, I can do some additional streams like all you know outside of the new schedule but that's about all I can do in regards to streams now in terms of videos I will be providing additional content there but if you want to see me stream like a lot of content you got to move over to twitch because I'll be over there because it's just a safer option that's the biggest reason as to why I'm doing this. I understand if there are some people out there that may be highly upset with me. I'll even understand if there are some people that, you know, want to, you know, no longer be a sponsor on YouTube because of the fact that I'm not streaming as frequently on YouTube. I understand that. But... You know, I just hope to see you over on Twitch sometime. Uh, but all I want to do right now is just thank all of you for hearing me out. Um, thank all of you for all the amazing support that you provided over the years. And thank you for all the love. I still plan on supporting my YouTube family. I still plan on providing content on YouTube, but I cannot stream as much on YouTube as I used to. Um, it's very tough to talk about this, but it's something that has to be done. And I'd like to thank you guys so much for everything that you've done for me. And you guys have an ultra fantastic day, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a blessed guy. I mean, have a blessed day, guys. Peace.